Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. This is the Anchor Make M5, and it's the fastest out of the box desktop FDM3 printers that I've ever had the chance to work with. And it's sporting a build volume of 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters, which is a decent mid sized build volume for a 3D printer. Now, don't let the build volume of your 3D printer limit your creativity when it comes to the projects that you want to print. And when I saw a post from Nico over at Nico Industries about a new Gundam helmet that looks so so dang cool, I knew I needed to try and print that here on the Anchor Make M5. And how many pieces did I end up needing to print for this helmet? A good amount. <laughs> and Anchor Make is the sponsor of today's build video, which by the way, their M5 3D printer campaign is nearing its end, but you still have time to back the campaign if you're interested in getting one of these 3D printers for yourself. And as I mentioned, this thing prints incredibly fast, and the detail that comes off of these prints are so crisp and clear. The printer also has a flexible magnetic textured build plate, which allows you to get your prints easily off after they're finished printing. And one of my favorite features of the machine is that it has a built-in camera and mobile app support so that you can monitor your prints wherever you're at, even including mowing the lawn like I was the other day while checking up on the 3D prints. And I wanna say a big special thanks again to AnchorMake for sponsoring today's video. And if you're interested in more information about their Kickstarter campaign for the M5, you can find links to those down below. Before I could get to actually 3D printing any of the parts to this Gundam helmet, and thankfully they were already pre-cut up and fit for the most part here on the M5 build plate, but I did end up needing to making sure that everything was properly scaled to my head. I used a 3D scan of my head that I made with my iPhone using an app called Scandi Pro, which if you haven't seen that video, I'll link to it up here in the corner, which allows you to take 3D scans. And I was able to scale the helmet to fit my head, which came to about 82% scale. So I ended up rescaling all of the files by 82% in size. Now there were a few parts that I did need to take into mesh mixer and cut up. So the top portion of the helmet I ended up splitting in two because it was just too large to print on the M5. But after slicing those into two parts, I was able to orient it on the build plate so that we could get those properly printing. And for almost all of the parts of this build, I was printing everything at 0.2 millimeter layer height with five top layers, three bottom and two perimeter walls, printing everything at 250 millimeters per second and at an 8% infill. Now, there were a few pieces that I did print at different settings, mainly the top two pieces of the dome of the helmet. I printed that at 0.28 millimeter layer height. Again, I just didn't want this to take forever to print because those parts are so much larger and they needed a ton of supports. Plus, you're not really gonna notice those. And I also printed this cover piece to the Mohawk in PET-G, which is the first time I'm printing with PET-G on the M5 and it printed beautifully. I printed this at 150 millimeters per second, which is drastically faster than I normally print with PET-G at a temperature of 245 degrees. And I went back through and calculated calculated out how many hours it took me to print all of these parts to this helmet, and it took 73 hours or just over three days of 3D printing on the AcreMake M5. Now, that might sound like a lot. However, one of the coolest things that I was noticing while doing this project on the AcreMake is when I was going through and slicing my files, I was getting an estimated print time, and that actual estimated print time almost precisely matched what the actual print time of the files are. Now, for anyone out there that's done 3D printing before, this is actually pretty wild because typically those numbers and estimates are wildly off. And this is pretty wild to me because the estimates are so closely matching the actual print times. Now, if I take this print time into consideration and look at the same exact files printing on a different machine, this would have taken me almost four and a half days to print. So an extra day and a half of printing was saved by using the AcreMake M5 to print this helmet. Now, before I can get to the actual assembly of the helmet, I need to remove all the supports from these prints. So let's get to it. Now that we've got all the supports removed, I ended up using a deburring tool for the very first time. And I have to say, 
If you have a 3D printer, this is an amazing tool that you have to pick up. This helps clean up all of the edges where I had supports connecting on my 3D prints, or maybe it was on the build plate where there was a slight elephant's foot. I was able to very easily clean this up with this very sharp tool. Highly recommend grabbing one of those. But what we need to do next is throw on some gloves here for a little bit of protection, and we're gonna be using some 3D gloop to adhere all of these parts together. Now I'm gonna start with the top pieces of the helmet and try and adhere those together with a little bit of this gloop here. So what this does is it's a chemical agent that is going to allow the two PLA printed parts to bond together. This stuff is way stronger than super glue and I recently did a video on different ways that you can connect your 3D printed parts together. And this is easily one of my favorite because it just works so well with PLA prints. And there we go. That was a really quick weld there for the 3D gloop. It's already nice and stuck together. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and run some more along the inside seam there. Side face pieces has a little notch that it's gonna slide into. Oh, that's nice. I don't even necessarily need to glue this in. It's, uh, actually I, sh I should. <laughs> Now, I also had some of these LED eye lights for cosplay that are battery operated that I got off of Amazon, and I'm gonna install these in the helmet. And here are the results of our Gundam aerial helmet that we 3D printed on the Anchor Make M5. I am so happy with the results that I was able to get off of this 3D printed project and I was able to install those acrylic light up LED eyes that are battery powered that I was able to get hot glued into the eye sockets. And let's test out and see if this thing actually fits. <laughs> oh my goodness. This thing is awesome. Now I can't actually see through the eyes, so I'm gonna have to try and find a solution to that. But this piece, fits so well and looks amazing. Is that the back plate of the helmet, I need to order some magnets and then install those here on the back of the helmet. I'll probably just uh, hot glue those in place or use some super glue in those in place so that I can take the back plate on and off. If I permanently welded the back plate of the helmet on, I wouldn't be able to fit my head through the bottom opening there. I also wish that I separated the chin piece from the face mask so that I could have printed that in the red to match the forehead piece. And the Mohawk cover plate that I printed in transparent or clear PET G isn't as clear as I was hoping it to. Uh, so I'm gonna probably go back and resin 3D print that so that we can visually see all the different wiring here. And I'll probably end up painting those wires so it just has a little bit of more contrast like in the renders. But overall, the print quality on this is outstanding. Printed almost entirely at 0.2 millimeter layer height on the Anchor Make M5. If you're interested in printing one of these massive Gundam helmets for yourself, I'll have links down below to Nico Industries' website where you can find a variety of different file options that he provides there. And if you're interested in the Anchor Make M5, their Kickstarter campaign, again, is still up and running as of the time of this video posting. And if you're interested in backing the printer over on Kickstarter, I'll have links to that down below. And again, don't let the build volume of your 3D printer dictate what creative things you wanna run off in 3D print. Loving, loving this build off of the M5. Hey, thanks again for watching you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Yeah, I taped the uh, the back plate of the helmet on and I can't squeeze it over my head. I'm definitely gonna need some magnets for this. And uh, obviously the other big thing that I have an issue with with helmets is I love printing them, but it always messes up my hair.